on their own. And also, a problem we've talked about for what feels like years, relief, relief pitching. It's yep. just not that good. We're not getting the job done. <laughs> like yeah, the man I definitely agree. The, the bullpen's definitely going to have to step up if they want to uh, make a run in the playoffs. And as it stands right now, they are in a playoff spot, right? And so they're a half game behind the division, and they're tied with the Mariners, but they have the tiebreaker right now. They've got seven games coming up against the Mariners. What are the odds of this of them holding on to this current wild card position? Remember, perfectly in play for a division, though. Jalen, what do you think their odds are? So personally, as you uh, spoke on, I don't think they're going to do too well against the Mariners. You know, we start off three games, you know, home. Um, but then we end this uh, season, you know, at the Mariners. I think they're going to sweep the Angels. Um, but I feel like the other teams in the division are going to do well enough to um, get the playoff uh, spots as compared to us. Yeah, the Astros have a three-game set against the Royals mm -hmm. coming up. I believe they have the D-backs to end yeah. the season. So not looking great there. Adam, what do you think? So my thing is it's really going to come down to these first six games because we have – Mariners for three, Angels for three, Mariners for four. Right. So, and right now we have the Mariners at home starting tomorrow. So you really want to win two out of three against the Mariners. Maybe, maybe next week against the Angels, you want to get two out of three or three out of three because if you don't, you're going back to Mariners land. And at that point, it's four road games. And when it comes to end of season, the energy's going to be different. And I don't think you're going to pull out three or four wins against the Mariners. So it really comes down to what we do in these first six games. And we also need to take advantage of the fact that um, while we're playing the Angels, the Mariners are going against the Strohs. Mm -hmm. Right. So if the Strohs can, you know, put down the Mariners a bit, give them two losses, we need to get two wins so we can go back to Seattle with some cushion because I don't want to go back there only up maybe half a game or a game ahead because then what are you going to do? Right. I don't think we're going to win three. I mean, could come down to the last game of the season, it really. really and so it really could. And so we touched on Josh Young and Adolis Garcia a little earlier. They did return to the lineup on Monday after being on the IL for a while, especially Young. What does their return to the lineup mean? Adam, I'll let you talk on it first. What, what, do, what do they bring to this team? Their return to the lineup, all right? So the thing that Adolis Garcia, I'll, I'll, I'll go on an individual basis. Garcia is your biggest hitter. That is your leading homer, leading RBI guy. So when you bring him back, you're bringing back one of your best hitters. Like... And having Garcia and Seager in the same lineup is very nice. And Josh Young is a great contact hitter. He's, he's mostly solid, and he gets a lot of RBIs too. Like, that's a guy who can normally help you start our, like, big innings. Can help us start our four, five, six run innings. Right. So if you're – so bringing them back, you have your hitting back for, for whenever you're going against the Mariners, the Angels, and the Mariners again. So now you don't really have an excuse. And now the Rangers hold their entire fate in their own hands. Jalen, what do you think? Young and a Garcia, what do they bring here back to the lineup? Adam spoke on it greatly, but those guys are just ballers. That's what it comes down to. They're exactly what you want late game um, situations and late season situations. If those guys um, play well and play how we're used to them playing, even though I think they won't make the playoffs, um, mm -hmm. I feel like they have a great chance to, um, and maybe even win the division somehow, but we'll see. Right, and so let's say hypothetically season ends, Rangers are in a wild card spot. They would go up against the Baltimore Orioles. As it stands right now, it's most likely the Rays aren't going to catch up to them. How do we see a three-game set in Baltimore going? Jalen, what do you think about this? We might get one. Okay. <laughs> I don't, that, we're not winning that one. <laughs> okay. Adam, what do you think? Th is three-game set. Anything can happen. I kind of feel like that we're going to end up getting whooped because the Orioles have beaten us this year pretty badly multiple times. I don't really see it working. I'd rather not face the Orioles. I had to be honest with mm -hmm. you. I'd rather face anyone else. I'd rather face the Astros. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, the Orioles have been the team to beat this year for sure in the AL. Okay. Real quick. World Series prediction. Who's winning it? Jalen, who's winning the World Series? The Dodgers. Dodgers all the way. I'm a Dodgers fan. Go California. Um, that's my team. So Dodgers. Dodgers. So yeah. Dodgers coming out of the NL over the Atlanta Braves. Yeah, it is. It, it, Dodgers over anyone. All right. I would be stocked. All right, Adam, who's winning the World Series? I'm going to go out on a limb and I'm going to say the Braves. I that's right. Have the talent. That's not even out on the limb. All right, everyone. Well, that's it for the Rangers. When we come back, we're going to be talking about the Dallas Cowboys versus Cardinals preview. So stay right with us.
didn't see you there. Let's get started. This is a motor vehicle. This is the blinker mechanism. To use it, push it up for the right blinker and down to go left. You're welcome. It was easy. Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to Sports Zone. I'm joined by Jose Moreno and Kendall Keaton, and we are going to discuss the Dallas Cowboys. They just got a win over the Jets, and they're going to go up against the Arizona Cardinals. Guys, quick thoughts on this, this game against the Jets. Cowboys dominated again. Jose? Uh, I think it was just a great defensive overall showing by the Cowboys. I mean, great play by the D linemen, Micah Parsons and uh, Le Leighton Vander Esch. Both linebackers played really well this past Sunday. Uh, I loved our secondary three picks against Zach Poor Wilson. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that guy got yeah. bullied out there uh, by Trevon Diggs in our second uh, cornerback. What about you? Kendall, yeah, what do you think? Yeah, I agree. I think the defense was very explosive. Micah Parsons, OJ Ujua, they also Marcus Lawrence as well. And then the offense was great as well, but I feel like they just—they were good, but I feel like we could we could see more from them, you know. Yeah, very mediocre offense. Right, and you just said Trayvon Diggs just had such a big game, so impactful on defense, and then we find out today he tears his ACL in practice. Real quick, how how does this impact this team, Kendall? I'm gonna get your thoughts first. How does Trayvon Diggs going out impact this team? I feel like it's a big hit on the defense. Yeah. I feel like one player is not gonna affect them too much, but you never know. It's the Cowboys, so. Um, I feel like we do have really good people to back him up with us, Jaron Bland, mm -hmm. you know, so the team is stacked with talent, so I feel like they should be able to bounce back from it. You know, Trevon Diggs is a very talented player, but a big problem with him is he kind of goes more so for flash rather than substance. Uh, it's a big issue he's had. He always goes for a pick. He's not very good in, in, in pass defense, but this Cowboys defense is a team that can honestly you could put anyone in any position and I think it could work out yeah. that's how united this this defense is under Dan Quinn and I think you can say that for a lot of Cowboys defenses in general there's never really a standout defensive Cowboys player you know yeah. you kind of have one guy or so you know your your, your wares in the back or in, in the past not in the back um, you know your DeMarcus Lawrence for a bit and now it's you know our, our, our big middle linebacker uh, but I truly don't think Trevon Diggs will be that big of a miss for us. I, I think this team is already just on fire. This defense is one of the all-time greatest right. probably uh, so far. But They're deep on defense. They're deep. They're man. deep. They're deep. And so the Cardinals, they went up 20 to nothing against the Giants and then proceeded to blow that game. The Cowboys blew out the Giants. So let's see. What are going to be the keys to taking care of the Cardinals? I mean, 0-2 pretty much picked a finished last in every prediction. What do you think? You know, well, f very funnily enough, uh, <laughs> Trevon Diggs, I was like, he better start playing really well. <laughs> but that's not going to be happening. He's currently in a hospital bed, uh, yelping in pain. <laughs> um, stay safe, buddy. Uh, but I really do think the D-line just got to keep playing the way they are. Just keep murdering offenses. Keep, you know, eat, all, eat alive Joshua Dobbs. He doesn't really have much O-line there right. to begin with. I think just play however you're, how, 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 you're, how you're playing right now. Keep that up. Keep up the momentum. Don't let it get to your head now that you've lost when you're big guys. And I think this game will be more winnable than anything. Kendall, what are the keys? I agree, but I've noticed that we kicked five field goals our last game, so I would like to see them, the offense, of course, finish the drives that they like weren't able to against the Giants. But I, 
the Jets are. But I feel like they should be able to tighten up. And, of course, the defense has handed them those past two wins. Mm -hmm. So if the defense, like Jose said, keeps up with their – Sorry, keeps up with their, um, momentum. Momentum. There you yes. go. It's, very, it's a very hard one <laughs> to remember. As the assist. They should be able to win this game. Absolutely. And so let's talk about our key players of the game here. Uh, Jose, who do you think is going to be the biggest impact for the Cowboys? Dak, I'm not trying to be Jim McMahon Prescott. Uh, <laughs> Dak <laughs> has a lot to live up to right now, if I'm being honest with yeah. you. I mean, everyone's focusing on defense. He's kind of like the little sister from Brady Bunch, if anyone ever watched that. You know, he's like, defense, defense, defense. Why does no one ever talk about me? You know, he did put up 300 yards this past game. He's waking up now. And I think this Cardinals defense is full of bums and jabronis. And I wouldn't be surprised if Dak, I'm not trying to be Jig McMahon. I'm serious. Prescott would just go off against these clowns and do really well. I would not be surprised at all. I, I think Dak Prescott's got MVP level to him in this game because he's playing against a D2 the <laughs> defense. Okay, well, Kendall, uh, how, how are the Cowboys going to do against these bums and jabronis on the Cardinals? Who's your key player? My key player is Michael Parsons, of course. Yeah. He's, Bandwagon. Uh, yeah, he's, the, you know, <laughs> he's just a very fast and explosive defensive player to me. And then, like, he's basically like every quarterback nightmare at this point. So... Who would want to even like you know play against the Cowboys? He's uh, one of the best players I've seen, defensive players I've seen since prime JJ Watt, in my opinion. Prime JJ. Prime. 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 Recent. Hopefully Cardinal he too. doesn't get as injured as prime JJ Watt. <laughs> <laughs> that guy had a stack of dimes for a neck. <laughs> <laughs> and so real quick, let's talk about someone to watch out for for the Cardinals. Kendall, who are you looking for on this Cardinals team? Josh Dobbs. Uh, yes. Josh Dobbs. Josh Dobbs. I would say he had a pretty okay game against the Giants, but of course they like you know let up, blew the lead, and they lost. But I feel like he, if he has a better game this go round, maybe it'll be a closer game. All right, Jose, real quick, who's your Cardinals guy? Nobody. I don't think there's anyone to fear on this team. It's Again, like I said, it's a bunch of jabronis. This is going to be one of the worst teams in the NFL. They're, they're one star player that you should be worried about. Dallas native, and I can't remember his name right now. That's how relevant he is to me. But, <laughs> but literally, I, I don't see anyone kind of stepping up to this team right now. All right. Well, we're looking forward to it on Sunday. When we come back, we're going to be talking about some UNT coach ratings, so stay with us. Now we return to Fabric of Passion. Oh, Hector, it will be so hard for us to part, but we must. But, my love, what did I do? I thought we were meant to be together forever. I am so disheartened to say that you're just, just not in style anymore. But you will be, to someone else, in a better place. Y you're gonna shred me? No. I'm donating you to one of the many clothing donation boxes available on campus. There is one in the Union by the Syndicate and one on Union Circle Drive. Oh, well, why didn't you just say so? I'm going to be someone's new shirt. I thought you'd be more distressed. Oh, absolutely not. It was cramped in your closet anyways. Maybe you would like to be shredded after all. Welcome back to Thursday Night Sports Zone. I'm your host, Jake Levine. I'm joined by Sydney Johnson and Matthew Watson. And we're going to talk about the UNT coaches and we're going to give them some ratings, A through F. And let's, I mean, let's talk about football first, right, guys? It's football season. UNT just picked up a win. Sydney, who, what's your rating for Eric Morris? So for Morris, I would give him around a B minus. Um, we know that he's our new coach this season. He was recently, previously the offensive coordinator at um, Washington State. And I think he had a pretty good track record over there. It seems like when they get their offense figured out, he's a pretty strong coach. 
Um, it's just a matter of if he can do that here at UNT as well. Matthew, what do you give Eric Morris? I give him a C minus. Uh, you know, he's a brand new coach here at UNT in a brand new conference. But other than that, you know, you said he came from Washington State, right? They had an explosive offense where they had a premier number one quarterback in Cameron Ward. You know, he comes here and what is he doing? He's starting two quarterbacks first two games, trying to figure things out. Choose one, man. Uh, Chandler <laughs> Rogers, Chandler Rogers, right? He's obviously been the better quarterback. He's thrown four touchdowns and one interception. Stone Earl, four, four touchdowns and four interceptions. I mean, choose one, man. All right. I think, I think he's kind of chosen Rogers at this point. Yeah. It should be. But uh, I also gave Eric Morse a C minus, actually. You're one and two. You get blown out in your opener. You lose mm -hmm. to one of the worst teams in college football. I'll give 46 points to them. Should That's have a C minus. Me. FIU? Should have beat should FIU. Have beat FIU. Should be two and one at this point. So C minus for me. All right, let's roll over to Michael Akers. Uh, he has won three straight conference championships. That equals three straight NCAA tournament appearances. The program only had one of these before Akers came in a few years ago, and they have risen 180 spots in the national rankings under his coaching. I have to give him an A uh, because that is about as good as it comes. Just about. You'll find out what the best is next. Sydney, what do you give Akers? I totally agree with you. Akers has an A in my book. He's been our coach since 2016, and for good reason. Um, like you said, he's led us to three straight Conference USA championships. Um, and I mean, the man owns his own full service indoor and outdoor golf training system. So I feel like that speaks for itself. He sounds kind of sick, doesn't he? <laughs> Definitely an expert. Matthew, what do you give him? Uh, I give him an A plus. I think what you stated just right there says enough. Three straight mm -hmm. Conference USA championships. He also won the Barstool's, uh, the Lady Barstool Open Championship, I believe. Really? Yeah, UNT did. They that? were invited to win that, which included a number of Division I schools. Yep. And they won that. Um, that was during COVID, I think, which is also under his tenure. Um, so I have to say, it, he, he's been one of the better coaches. They've had one of the better programs at UNT. So it has to be an A+. Plus. Yeah, sure. Uh, I definitely could agree, agree with that. Next up, we have John Hedlund. He is the winningest head Another coach in UNT sports history. I had to give him my A+. Plus. Uh, he's led the women's soccer team to just unbelievable stuff. And let's make note of this. He's the only head coach in women's soccer history here at UNT. He started in 1995 when we were playing our home games at local parks. And now we have a stadium. And at home, he has an 833 winning percentage. A plus, in my opinion. I felt a little bad giving out two A pluses. So he's got my A plus and Akers has my A. Sydney, what do you think? I totally agree. If I could give um, him an A++, I would. He's basically built the program from the ground up himself. Mm -hmm. um, like you said, has been quoted as one of the winningest coaches in all sports of UNT. And um, he's only one of the two coaches who have never had a losing season, never have had a losing season right. while coaching over 20 years here at UNT Sports. So I feel like his record speaks for itself. Matthew, what do you think? I mean, I have to agree with you guys. Uh, next to Mean Joe Green, the statue that should be built is John Hedlund. John Hedlund. Um, and I, if we're looking at this year, too, he's 6-2. and two. They're only one in the conference, but that's okay. Uh, they've allowed, they've got, they're outscoring their opponent 22-9. The only difference is the saves. The opponent has had 44 saves to UNT's 33. And, I mean, th he's still the winningest coach at our school right so any he's sport gonna ever. Have a, he's gonna have to have a bronze statue like of him just kicking a soccer ball or something i agree let's do it i i think you should design it actually oh, okay <laughs> uh so lastly uh women's volleyball christy porter she's only a second year head coach but we're gonna give her a grade because you know we like to be critical um she had her first first postseason victory for unt volleyball last year um, and since 2018, they finished fourth in conference play. Real quick, I'm going to give her a B. Sydney, what do you give Christy Porter? Porter, for me, gets a C plus. I All think right. she has a pretty impressive coaching history. She was previously the coach at uh, Navarro and Corsicana and was pretty successful over there. However, I feel like at UNT so far, their wins and loss ratio is pretty even. Yeah. So I feel like maybe if she gets – a little bit more chemistry with the team or a little bit more comfortable here at UNT, maybe they can have a better season this year. Matthew, real quick, what do you give her? I mean, I agree with you guys. C. I, you said B. I, I'm saying C. Uh, I think just the record indicates alone that she should have a C. And I think she would tell you that. You know, 7-7 seven and seven right now, 0-4 in conference, or 0-4 right. away. You have, to, you have to change that up. You have to be able to win games on the road in order to win anything. 
of sim months in any sport. So let's change that up. Let's start winning on the road. Let's keep the wins at home because they have a great record at home. Let's just keep winning and you know, maybe it'll be a B at the end of the season. All right. Well, we'll get it up by the end of the season. When we come back, we're going to be talking about some of the rule changes in Major League Baseball this season, so stay tuned. Has the weight of stress and anxiety ever felt too heavy to overcome? Wish there was a safe place to confide in? Wish granted. At UNT, we offer counseling and testing services to students located on the third floor of Chestnut Hall. UNT, we're here for you. It's that time of year where everyone plays a dangerous game with the flu. Going in uneducated, you run the risk of symptoms like cough, <coughs> migraine, and fatigue. Don't be like this guy. Combat the flu with cough drops, ibuprofen, and a good night's sleep. Be smart. Don't catch the flu. Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to Sports Zone. I'm your host, Jake Levine. I'm joined by Jay Lathan and Taggart Kent. We're going to be discussing some Major League Baseball. As we know, this season, the rules have been changed up quite a bit. We've seen many changes this season, and the effects have been pretty large. Um, the average time of baseball game is now two and a half hours, roughly, and uh, we haven't seen in the past four seasons an average below three hours. Right, so I want to ask you guys, what does this shorter games mean for the game of baseball? Jay, what do you think? Um, I think it aids in bringing in new fans to the game. Uh, I have a lot of friends when I ask them uh, that, like, what they wanted, why they won't watch baseball, they're like, you know, it's too long, it's too slow paced. Mm -hmm. So I think the speeding up of games, you know, it'll allow new fans to keep up with, the, keep up with their attention spans. Tiger, what do you think? Is this good for baseball? Yeah, you know, the MLB's biggest issue right now is viewership and getting especially young people to buy into the game. Mm -hmm. And the biggest issue with that was absolutely the time of play. You have, you have games running at like three and a half hours, which is just ridiculous. Nobody wants to sit there on a Tuesday afternoon and watch three and a half hours of baseball in July, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's just the sad truth of the situation. Yeah, absolutely. And so we have seen a big rule change with you can only pick off twice now in a row. So essentially, if you pick off twice, it's kind of almost a free steal, right? So Ronald Acuna Jr. has 67 stolen bases this year. The last time a player had this many stolen bases was 2007. That was a speedy Jose Reyes for the Mets. So what do you guys think? There's two sides to this. What is the effect of the larger bases, Jay? Do you think this has a huge effect on it? I mean, when you're talking about stolen bases, these are real deal bang bang plays. So I mean, every little inch counts right there. Mm -hmm. And I mean, allowing allowing a base runner to time up with the pitch clock and the pickoff rules. I mean, you're just really giving free reign to the runners to really apply pressure to the pitcher. Tiger, what do you think? Is the big bases a big uh, impact on the game? Yeah, you know, as analytics gets added to the game and becomes bigger, you really have seen a drop off in stolen bases since the mid twenty or mid twenty tens Royals. Mm -hmm. And I want you to imagine in like a game of football, if teams just completely stopped running the ball, if you took out a part of the game and just completely eliminated it, that's essentially what was happening in baseball. You still had the guys who were super fast that were stealing bases, but to have a guy in Ronald Acuna who's 67th percentile in sprint speed stealing 60 plus bases, that's definitely a step up for the game. Yeah, definitely. And another uh, impact could this, another impact could be that I already talked about, you can only pick off twice now. Which do you guys think is a bigger, aid to stealing bases picking off twice or bigger bases Taggart what do you think definitely bigger bases like Jay said every inch counts the pickoff things does matter but at the end of the day it's about time to get to that second base or even right. third base and the pickoffs you know it it's definitely it, it takes away from the mind games and 
you know, it's not leading off as much, but it's definitely the bigger bases. Jay, what do you think? Bigger bases or uh, two pickoffs? Um, I'm actually going to disagree with you on that. Um, I think that uh, the pickoff rule really just allows you to know the pitcher's hand. I mean, we saw early in the season Cedric Mullins, he really would get pitchers to pick off two times. And there, therefore, now I can just take off and do whatever I want because I know you have to pick off and make a successful out unless you want to give me that base. Although I don't think anybody will touch Ricky Henderson's record of 130. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's, no that's, that's pretty safe. Uh, so lastly, the big change, aside from the pitch clock, was that the shift was banned, right? You have to have two fielders on each side of second base. And they have to be on the dirt. Uh, and last year, the average, average batting average for the entire league was 243. This year, it's up to 249. Do you guys think that the banning of the shift has a huge effect, Jay, real quick? Um, you know, I feel like it's a major thing, but I mean, at the end of the day, good hitters are going to find holes. That's why we have guys like Luisa Rice hitting 354 right, right now. But it does matter as Texas Rangers shortstop uh, Corey Seager. I mean, he's hit 90, almost 93% of his outs last year were in the shift. All right, Tiger, what do you think? Yeah, and let's be clear, the shift isn't banned. It's just heavily dialed True, back. Right. Teams are still shifting on guys like Corey Seager, your heavy lefty pool hitters. They're just not, you know, it's not as egregious as it was the season before. And to look at batting average, it's only up 0.6, which is big in the term of, you know, season-long stats, but it's not big enough to justify being like, oh, hey, the changing of the shift rules really changed the batting average. Absolutely, I have to agree. Well, everybody, thank you so much for tuning in to Thursday Night Sports Zone. Uh, go watch Nightly News at 6 o'clock. That is coming up in about a minute. Follow us on socials at NTTV underscore sports, and we will see you next Thursday, same time, same place, same channel. Have a great night. Have a great weekend. Go Mean Green.